Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about graphing vectors in Desmos geometry. Usually when I'm making videos, I'm using the Desmos graphing calculator, but to show vectors, I really need a different kind of tool, which means I need to use the Desmos geometry application. Inside the Desmos geometry calculator, I think you can see it looks a little different. I have a lot of white space. I want to be able to really tell where my vectors are at. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the settings. And I'm going to turn the grid on. I'm also going to turn on the axes because I want to be able to see where my numbers are. I'm okay with this being in degrees, so I'm going to leave that alone and just click away so that I see my full screen. There are multiple ways to do vectors inside the Desmos Geometry Calculator. One way is when you look across the top, I see this drop down menu, and you can see it has segment, line, ray, vector. So I can click on vector. When I click on vector, it's looking for me to give a starting place, so let's pick 0, 0, and an ending place. Let's say we pick something easy like 2, 2. If you want to move the vector, you can click on the settings, which will allow you to edit the points. Then I can grab the point, and I could stretch it to a different place, or swing it around to a different quadrant, and then when I'm done, I just click away. You can add another vector by clicking back on the drop down, clicking on vector again, and then just adding your points for your new vector. And this is fun. This shows us vectors, it gives us a good idea of how to play with things, but it doesn't do everything I really want to do with vectors. So let's delete all of this. A second way to do vectors is to type in the word vector. Notice it was in italics until I finish the word vector, which says it recognizes what we're doing. When you put in a vector, you need to put in the initial point and the terminal point of the vector. So you start with a parenthesis, and then I'll put my initial point, and let's use 0, 0. And then let's do a terminal point, let's say I do 3, 4. To make it easy to talk about this vector, I'm going to go to the beginning and type A equals. Now I have a name for my vector. Let's add a second vector. I'm going to call this one B. Again, I'm going to type the word vector. I'm also going to put this one in standard position, so I'm going to start it at the point 0, 0. And then let's put this one in the second quadrant. Let's call it negative 1, positive 2. Naming the vectors gives me the ability to add them, subtract them, by just telling Desmos what I would like it to do. I can type in A plus B, and you can see it adds the sum. I could do A minus B. And here's my new vector. I'm going to get rid of a minus b for a minute. Let's quickly review what it means to add vectors. Often when we talk about adding vectors, we use something called head to tail, which means we look at where the first vector finished and we put on the second vector. So to show you that, let's do a new vector d. So I'm going to start by naming it, then I'm going to type in vector. I'm going to tell this vector to start at the end point of a. So this is the point 3, 4. Then I'll move according to my vector b. b says go to the left one. So 3 minus 1 gives me 2. And then it says go up 2. So I was at 4. When I go up 2, now I go to 6. Now we can see this movement of a, then d, comes to this point, which was a plus b. So this shows us this head-to-tail addition, that if I use a, and then this vector d was equal to the movement of b, then I get back to this point of a plus b. So having Desmos do the addition gives us the same thing we would get if we did head to tail, but it does it in a way that I could never draw. Let's go back and look at subtraction. If I make this a minus b, I need to again adjust my vector d to show the subtraction. So this says 3 minus negative 1 would be a positive 4, and then 4 minus 2 would give me 2. Now I traveled my vector a, I did the opposite of b, and it gave me this overall vector a minus b. Remember when you're dealing with vectors, they have both a magnitude and a direction. Being able to visually see the vectors will help you apply them to many real-world situations.